Okay, we're going to wrap up um, the Cold War here. Uh, we're going to hit up about 30 years of Cold War history in about 10 minutes. So put your seatbelts on because here we go. Um, so this is kind of how we're going to start tomorrow. So be ready for this. I'm going to give you a piece of paper um, and I'm going to have to, I'm going to have you answer this question. If a first grader asked you, what is the Cold War? What would you say to them? We've looked at a lot of things um, in Berlin, in Cuba, the Soviet Union, okay, McCarthyism, the Red Scare, all this stuff. What is the Cold War? It's a hard concept. Um, be ready because it's coming tomorrow. Okay. So, the uh, <clears throat> just a little side note. Um, you have uh, this whole idea of getting rid of nuclear weapons, um, getting closer to peace, and just kind of a cool little thing I read in a magazine one time. You know, if you have the, the people that wave, uh, they do their little hand signals for air traffic control. If you take the N, which is this, and the D, which is this, and you lay them over the top of each other, it's the peace sign. That's where it comes from. And the Cold War is all about getting rid of this, the nukes, um, getting countries, uh, the Soviet Union, the United States, uh, agreeing to disagree and get along um, until uh, it's, it's going to be over. Okay? So if you're ever on Jeopardy, give me a shout out if you know what the, where the peace sign comes from. All right. So um, we looked at our missile bases. Okay? Uh, we have thousands of missiles. They have thousands of missiles. If eight of these missiles blew up, uh, we could destroy the entire human race. Okay? So it's all about getting rid of uh, these nukes on a, on a huge scale. Okay, um, uh, just like in the movie uh, that we watched, you have these massive missile, uh, um, nuclear missile sites, uh, you know, all over here. We looked at them on Google Earth, okay. Um, now, in the Cold War, um, there's this thing, they're, they're always battling to see who's the best, who's the brightest, who's the smartest, okay. And part of this is going to be this space race. Um, who can get to the moon first? And when it starts... The Soviets launched the first um, satellite in space. It's about the size of a beach ball. Sputnik, okay? Sputnik is the first satellite um, launched into space, 1957, okay? And then they launch a dog. And then we launch our first satellite a year later, okay? This is also when we uh, create NASA. Um, NASA was created uh, in the Cold War to show that the United States is smart, that we're capable, that we can beat the Soviets in their own game, okay? Um, they land a satellite on the moon, um, then they put a man in the space, then we orbit the earth, and then we put the woman in the space. Um, and this kind of goes back, and I, and I had this huge list, and it was like, they put a monkey in the space, and then we put two dogs, and we put a cat, and, they, and we're just kind of one up in each other until the space race is over when, uh, 1969, we land a man on the moon, okay, uh, or men on the moon. Okay, Buzz Aldrin and um, Neil Armstrong. Okay, so again, it's it's about who's smarter, who's better, um, and it's it's more and it's bigger than just communism versus capitalism. It's this these ideologies, these doctrines of who is the best. Okay, so kind of the tortoise and the hare. They start off with Sputnik, um, but we end it with uh, putting the man on the moon. Okay, and the uh, um, Famous pictures of us, you know, and you think about why do we put a why do we put our flag? You know, it's like capture the flag. Like, boom, we put that American flag right up on the moon. Okay, like yeah, what's up, commies? What's up, Soviet Union? We got here first. Okay, so when you're looking at your telescope, you're not going to see this. You're going to see the stars and stripes. Okay, we're the best. Um, now, um, we're going to hit a couple presidents pretty quickly. Um, President Johnson will come in after Kennedy. Um, he, he gets entangled in the Vietnam War, which we'll do an entire unit on the Vietnam War, but in a very brief nutshell. Um, you have communist North Vietnam, capitalist South Vietnam. Sound familiar? I hope so. If it doesn't, wake up, because we already learned about this with Korea. Who do you think we're going to help? We help the South. Okay. Um, we send in hundreds of thousands of troops, over 500,000 troops, to Vietnam to make sure they don't fall to communism. Okay? Johnson doesn't want to be seen as weak. Um, we get involved in this long, drawn-out war, millions of deaths, um, you know, 58,000 American deaths. Okay? 
but again, it's at the root. It's all about communism. Okay, but we'll come back again. We'll do two weeks on the Vietnam War. All right. Then you have Nixon. Okay. Now Nixon um, ends the Vietnam War when he gets elected, and Nixon kind of gets. Um, his political power, kind of like McCarthy. I mean, he's not as crazy as McCarthy, but he gets a lot of notoriety and fame from being this ardent, uh, strict, uh, passionate, anti-communist anti guy. Okay, So when he comes in, um, he's going to try to uh, repair some of these problems. Okay, And he plays the Soviet Union and China kind of off themselves. Uh, okay, He visits China. All right, he visits the Soviet Union. You can see him here with Chairman Mao. You can see him here um, with the uh, the Soviet Premier. And you know, really, this is a big deal. First president ever. So we've had we've had Truman, we've had Eisenhower, okay, um, we've had Kennedy, we've had Johnson. They've never visited a communist country. Nixon has taken these first steps um, in visiting two communist countries, the biggest, okay, China and the Soviet Union. All right. And this, of course, is going to help ease these issues, these problems, okay? Um, the Cold War is starting to melt, all right? Think of it that way. The, this big ice sculpture is starting to nice, uh, it's melting a little bit, slowly, okay? Now, in the 70s and 80s, now, I know this might not pertain to some of you because I've seen how some of you act. Um, can you make it through a class with someone you can't stand without punching them? Um, well, let me just tell you this. If you're a reasonable um, person, the answer should be yes. Okay, I know it might not apply to some of you. Um, the answer should be yes. Um, this is how the United States and the Soviet Union are going to kind of deal with things in the 70s and 80s. Okay, they go through this period called detente. Say it, detente. Say it again. We're going to say it three times. Detente, detente, detente. Okay. We can peacefully coexist, all right? We can agree to disagree. You can be over there, we can be over here, and we don't have to, like, drop bombs on each other or threaten to drop bombs on each other, okay? It's like how you can be in class with someone you can't stand, and you don't have to get up and punch them in the face. Now, again, some of you are maybe uh, not as reasonable um, as others, okay? But this is this idea of detente, okay? And this is really through the 70s and 80s. Um, there's the threat, but... It's not as um, scary, I guess. Okay, they're reaching this atomic balance that you know, where we were trying to always have more nukes than them, and they were trying to have more nukes than us. Uh, atomic balance is reached. Okay, and the Soviet leadership starts to be out of touch with its people. Now, Soviet Union again—that's encompassing 15 countries. Okay. And it's very difficult to uh, control 15 countries with communist uh, grip. And they st things start to unravel in the Soviet Union. I mean, people start to be a, a little unrestful, um, questioning authority. And Soviet leadership can't um, keep the people down uh, like they used to. Okay, So when you look at uh, the world in 1980, I mean, um, it's, it's not half and half, but it's pretty close Okay, as far as communism versus non-communism. Okay, and now today, you know, there's five communist countries. Um, so, yeah, communism is definitely, this is at its peak here. Okay, now, um, this guy here, Mikhail Gorbachev, he comes in, um, wants to fix the Soviet Union's problems, but ultimately stay communist. Okay, so um, they are... Um, um, they're going through okay, some big changes. Okay? Now, two terms. Um, you know, think of this as like a 12-step program. You can't fix a problem if you don't admit that you have one. All right? Two terms to the Russian people. Glasnost and perestroika. All right? I mean, they're difficult. Um, but if you kind of understand the, the concept. Um, this first one, let's talk about our issues. Let's, let's get our dirty clothes out here. Let's air out our laundry. Let's let the skeletons out of the closet. Let's get rid of the propaganda. Okay. Um, let's recognize our problems. And then once we recognize them, let's fix them. Okay. But he still wants to remain communist, but he's willing to at least take those steps um, to fix the issues. Okay. Now, President Reagan um, comes in, and this is really near the end, um, 
and he kind of is going to play the ultimate card here that he says, you know what, we're going all hands on deck. Um, we're going to introduce something called the Strategic Defense Initiative. Okay, and it gets dubbed Star Wars, and we'll look at this, how why it gets dubbed Star Wars. Um, you see you have a, a shield here um, protecting the Earth. Okay, he wants to put this program um, that would use satellites and lasers in space to shoot down um, enemy missiles. Okay, now this program doesn't end up going through, but the Soviets are like, holy crap, these guys are serious. There's no way we can keep up with the United States. Okay, now Reagan again proposed this. We don't do this, um, but just the fact that we're willing to even think about doing this, um, the Soviets are going to pull out here. Okay, Reagan spends 2.2 trillion with a T um, dollars on defense in eight years. Okay, um, now you see here um, Reagan, Gorbachev. Um, signing these peace agreements to, to get rid of nuclear weapons. Um, the end is getting near. The Berlin Wall is destroyed in 1989. This fixture that's really the um, face of communism versus capitalism. All right. Um, we'll look at some stuff here with the Berlin Wall coming down. Uh, Germany being reunited uh, for the first time um, really fully since, since World War II. Okay. And... The end, um, 1989, Soviet Union has their first elections, um, real elections since 1917, okay? Um, and they break up into 15 different countries. So if you're looking at a map, we were doing that world map, and kids are like, where's the Soviet Union? There's not one, okay? It's 15 countries now, um, with Russia being the main one. So the Soviet Union is no longer around. Um, 1991, the Cold War is over because the Soviet Union breaks apart, and it's kind of a slow, um, you know, melting. I mean, it gets really bad. It's really bad in the beginning after World War II. It's real bad, and you know, from 45 to 63, real bad with all the Cuban Missile Crisis, the Berlin issues, the Berlin Wall, the Bay of Pigs, Cuban Revolution, and then it's a slow kind of chess match after that. So. You can see what used to be the Soviet Union, okay, is now all of these countries, Estonia, and Lat you know, Latvia, Lithuania, Belarus, Ukraine, all of these in here, okay. So if you're looking at a world map, it doesn't look like this, all right. So that's the Cold War. Um, have, a, uh, have a good night. We'll talk about it in class tomorrow. See you guys.